<laughs> Welcome back guys, it's Israel. Have you guys been wondering how to create PDFs in C-sharp.net? Well, it's actually super easy. All you guys need to do is use Quest PDF. Quest PDF allows you to, with only C-sharp, create whatever PDF that you want. So you don't even have to worry about HTML or CSS like some of the other libraries make you actually have to use. So with that being said, let's get into the code so I can show you guys how you can create whatever PDFs that you want using Quest PDF. But really quick, I just want to give a shout out to all my channel members. If you guys want to see your names here, as well as get access to all the code from all the videos on my channel, click the link in the description or the join button on my profile, and then send an email to this email with the code that you want access to. But now let's get into the video. So we are now at the project. Uh, this is a straight up .NET 9 API that if you guys have seen any other videos on my channel, I've used before. So this is what it is. Uh, it has a handful of controllers and endpoints. So we have a bunch of endpoints for Pokemon data. So that's gonna be the database that we're gonna be pulling because in this PDF, I will load a table with data from the database because obviously some of you are gonna be using data in your PDFs that you pull from different you know, data sources. So I wanna show you guys how you do that. We will be adding in uh, a new controller called PDF controller and we're gonna be building it up in here and this is where we're gonna have our endpoint that we're gonna hit to create our PDF. So first things first, we need our library. So let's go download it. So we're gonna to go to our package manager and then we're gonna type in browse quest PDF and then the one that we want to install is this one right here. So we're going to click this and then we're going to click in here and we're going to install it and accept and it should be good to go. So that is the only package that we actually need to install to make Quest PDF work. So now let's start figuring out what our PDF controller is going to look like and let's set this up and then we'll get into the Quest PDF in a second. So this is going to be controller base in here. We're going to set up this with the route. That's good here. We are going to import our Pokemon repository. So we're gonna set that up here at the top. And then we're gonna have a method called create PDF. And that's what we're gonna have at the top here. Let me fix this. And then, cool. So we have at least this for right now. And we can just, this doesn't matter. So what we're gonna have here is we have create PDF, we have our PDF controller, and then we have this Pokemon repository. Inside of Pokemon repository, if we follow this in, we have an endpoint called get Pokemon. This is the endpoint that I'm gonna hit to get our Pokemon data. And the data from this endpoint is the one that I'm gonna use to actually generate the table with real data uh, in a PDF like you would probably do in the real world. But now let's go back to our PDF controller and keep setting that one up. So at the top here, I'm going to add that call to that endpoint for get Pokemon data. And then the next part is this is going to be for setting up the file path. Because when we create a PDF, we don't just want it shoved in some random folder in here. We want it to maybe go to a specific folder somewhere on our computer of whoever has this application. Maybe we want it to go to a specific spot. For here, we have this Pokemon PDF folder that I have right here. So that is where we're going to send this to. And then next is something very important for Quest PDF. And the next thing is we have this line right here. So this is basically setting the license that we're gonna be using. So before you can actually create a PDF, you need to make sure that you actually set the license. This is one of three, I believe. So community is free. And for probably the majority of people like you and me that just wanna create PDFs, we can just use a community license. But like you see right here, it says, uh, this MIT license is applicable mainly for companies and individuals with less than $1 million of USD annual gross revenue. So for, like I said, people like you and me, the community is fine. If you have a very big business that is making over a million dollars from everything I saw, the prices are completely reasonable. So there should be no problems there. But again, just make sure that you put your license here or else the uh, Quest PDF is gonna throw an error when you actually try to create the PDF. And if you guys want more information on Quest PDF and the documentation and tutorials, all you have to do is go to questpdf.com and then they have a ton of different things. So any information that you need, questpdf.com, I will link all of that in the description and anything that can be helpful as well. Uh, so moving along, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set up a basic PDF just so you guys can sort of see how it works. So I'm going to paste this in here. I believe here, I just need to import a package, this one. And as you can see here, this is a very basic example. And all we need to do here, I believe, is just return something, which I'm just gonna put return okay here at the bottom because it's gonna generate a PDF and just put it somewhere. 
Um, so right here we have the document create. So this is basically the whole page. And then here we have our page container. And then we're seeing basically the size of the page. We're setting margins, page color, the default font size. We're setting the header here. We're setting the content, so inside the page, and then we're setting our footers. So this is how you basically create a PDF. So as you guys can see, and I mentioned, you don't have to do uh, like some libraries where you're passing it in like a long list of strings of like HTML and CSS and things of that nature. This is basically something that looks very similar to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in C Sharp. So it, I think it just works for C Sharp developers that want to make PDFs. I think this is just it's easier for us to jump into than some of the other options that I see that seem a lot more complicated and do take uh, a lot more effort to get good with. So this is a basic example and now let's run it and see what happens. So right here we have our PDF endpoint. So we have this create PDF. I'm just going to go ahead and test the request and let's click it. We should get a 200. Okay. And now where has the PDF gone? Well, we just said generate PDF. What the generate PDF method does is it basically just saves them the PDF to wherever on the file path and it's going to call it hello.pdf. So that's all you have to do to actually generate the PDF. And if we look at our solution, we see right here that we have this hello.pdf. If we double click it, it should open it and we can see that we have hello PDF and then some Latin and then this big box and then our footer. So we can see that here we have our hello PDF. Uh, we have our Latin right here, and then we have some placeholder image and then our footer of page. So it's all cool and all, but like, hey, if I change the name of Hello PDF, I don't want to have to generate a new PDF every single time. Well, Quest PDF is prepared for this exact thing, and it's called their companion application. So Quest PDF solution to all of this is they have their companion application right here. So I'm also going to link that down below. But if you guys have been on YouTube and looking for how to create PDFs in C Sharp, you've seen that a lot of people mention a previewer application. Well, that application still exists, but it's now actually obsolete in the eyes of Quest PDF. If you go here and you do show in previewer, it's going to draw a line through it and it's going to tell you that this is now obsolete. So they do not want you to use the previewer anymore. They want you to use the companion application. And it's also very easy to use. And it works very similarly uh, to how the other application used to work. But let me show you guys how to actually get the companion app and then, you know, how it works. So to get the application, you need to go to questpdf.com backslash companion. And then you just go down here to installation and then just download the version for you. And then the changes in your code to actually use the companion is you just have to use a show in companion. And then you just need to run in hot reload. And I'll show you guys how to do that in Visual Studio and we can get into that. So once you actually download the package, so you're going to click this, it's going to go to your download. You're just going to install the application. It's very straightforward if you guys have ever installed any application. And then you're going to see a window that looks like this. So here we have the companion application. It's going to continue to look like this until we actually have our application running with hot reload. So to actually do that, we first need to add this. So instead of generate PDF, it's not going to be show in companion async. So it's actually going to be going to the companion app, not generating a PDF every time. This is so we can edit this and actually see what's going on in the PDF because otherwise we're just going to continuously be creating PDF after PDF after PDF. And then, you know, like that's super tedious. So we need to also add no wait here. And now we're good here. So now let's actually run this with hot reload so we can actually see the companion app in its full glory. So to actually run it, we're going to right click here and we're going to open up our API in PowerShell. And now that we're in here, we're going to do dot net watch run. So as you can see, hot reload is now running. So now we just have to open up our API, create the PDF initially, and then we should be able to just edit it and hot reload will take over and just keep refreshing the PDF in the companion app. So I'm going to open up my API here. So my API is running here on local 5093. So that's again, without pressing this, we're just running right here and we are using hot reload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this request to create a PDF. We should be good here. I'm going to press it. And then I should be able to go to the companion app and see that we have this. 
So our companion app is now connected to this. So if I go to hello PDF and I change it to hello Israel's YouTube channel and I save, I should see that this gets updated. Boom. So as you guys can see, it reloads pretty fast. And I think it just makes the experience of working with Quest PDF a lot easier because obviously you can visually see your PDF as you're making changes in the C sharp. And it just makes this whole experience a lot better than having to create a billion different PDFs for every single little change. But now let's continue with a more complicated example than this basic one. And let's actually use the data coming from my endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this basic example. So I'm going to go to container.page and I'm going to do this. I'm going to put all of this in here. And before I save or even look at the companion app, I'm going to walk you through what's going on in here. So what have I changed? Not a lot. We still have the basic page size, our margin, our page color, default text style. And then we have our header, which is going to be hello PDF from .NET 9 API. And then inside of our content, uh, we are going to now start setting up for our table. So our table is going to be in here. So we have this item dot table. We set up that we want three columns. We set up our headers here. Our headers are for the three columns. So it's going to be po Pokedex number, Pokemon and Pokemon type. And then in here, we actually don't need this anymore, but I do want to uh, mention something. If you guys are going to do like widths or you want to specify like hard, if you want to hard code where these values are going to be and you do like, I want this row to be row one or something of that nature. What this column wants are U I N T values. They don't just want regular integers. They want U integers. Essentially a U integer can't be a, a negative number. So they just want positive numbers because obviously they're creating a visual PDF. So it makes no sense that they would want negative numbers. So just something to keep track of, especially if you're using variables like this, you might have to cast it specifically to a UINT. So just so you guys know, but we're not actually going to use this, but we are here taking our list from all Pokemon from right here and we're looping through it. And then we are putting the data into each column of a specific row. So Pokedex number, Pokemon name and the type, and then we're leaving the footer as is. And one quick little tip that you guys might not know, especially if you want to check an endpoint while using hot reload is that if you're in hot reload, so using .NET watch run, this will be running. And maybe you want to debug to make sure that your API endpoint is coming back correctly. Well, once this runs, this is all you have to do. Once it's running, you just go up to debug, you go to attach the process, and then you just go find the .exe for your project. So it usually is just the name of your project dot exe. So right here you attach it and now your IDE is going to look like you're debugging. So now you're able to actually set a breakpoint here. So if I go back to my API and I do test request, we should now see that I'm actually able to go in here and check everything. So I'm able to actually go in here and check and make sure that the data and everything going into my PDF is correct. So I just wanted to point that out in case some of you didn't know how to attach a debugger while you're also doing the .NET watch. That's how you do it. And just a little quick pro tip, but now let's get into actually does this work? Did our data coming from our database actually work with our companion app? And then are we able to create a PDF and put it inside of our Pokemon PDF folder? So let's see. But right before we do that, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the other amazing content that I have for you guys. But now let's check out this PDF. So now we're again going to do .NET watch run. So we want that to be running. And then as you guys already saw, we are getting data from our API. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to go down here and I want to actually change this generate in PDF in a second. We're going to want to change it to our file path. Our file path, if you guys remember, came from up here, right here, where we're setting it to that folder and we're naming it my Pokemon report.pdf. And it's going to go into this folder. So we should see a little PDF once we actually run it. So I'm going to go back to the project. And with this hot reload actually running, I'm now going to again create a PDF. As we can see, it did a SQL query over here on our database. 
and we should be able to go back here and we should see that we now have a PDF. So again, if we look at it side to side, we have our hello PDF from .NET 9 API. We have that running. So again, if I change that to smiley face, we should see that this is gonna refresh with the smiley face. We have again, the Latin right here. And now we're able to loop through our Pokemon data with Pokedex number here, which is this Pokemon, Pokemon type. And we see we have this. And then since we kind of just left the defaults here and we didn't specify row or column or any of that, Quest PDF is smart enough to go ahead and roll it over to the second page so that we have our table kind of just continues and runs off and then we have our footer still. So now, now we're like, okay, our PDF is good. Let's actually send it to the folder that we want so that we can email it or whatever we want to do. So now all you have to do is you just have to stop this, uh, stop the .NET run, and you just need to replace this here. Remove show in companion async because your PDF is ready to go. And then you just have to remove this away here. And now you can just run however you want. You just have to hit this endpoint. So we are going to do this and we're just going to test that this runs. So our API is running. Let's go ahead and test if this works. Let's do this, press this. We should see that we get a 200 here. And if I close everything, I go to my folder. What is this? Something in here. Let's move it over and we open my Pokemon report and we have our PDF just as beautiful as it was whenever we were watching it and checking it out in the companion app. But that is how easy it is guys to use Quest PDF to create PDFs that look professional for invoicing or whatever need you have. There's obviously a lot more functionality that you guys can check out in the documentation, but I honestly love it. And going forward, if I have to create any PDFs, I'm going to be using Quest PDF. And if you guys want to learn more about C Sharp or .NET, click on these videos right here.